This is how Nada and Polo met? Yes! Is this how my friends found each other? There is a signal on the console, a warning on repeat. 16 short bursts of data in a loop. Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everyone. Jason here, and this is our fresh start in No Man's Sky. In the last episode, we made a huge decision for Artemis. We let Artemis die in the game. So now we are on to talk to, oh, let me look. We gotta make sure our, yeah, see, look at this. It switches every time. We have to go tell Null what happened and Apollo what happened, what decision we made for Artemis. So now we need to, oh, let's talk to Apollo first. Are you receiving? The hollow terminus is showing available again. Your signal was, I, th I thought you were gone. It is a relief to hear Apollo again. It feels like we have not spoken in a long time, like 20 years. You guys didn't see that episode. It's been 20 years when we went through the portal. I try to recount the experience to Apollo as best I can. The gateway to the strange planet, a vast machine, the Crimson Orb. As I talk, I realize the memories themselves are unstable, that I cannot form them in my mind. It is just a dull, aching red. I tell Apollo that I think I saw the Atlas itself. You saw it? You met the Atlas? The Gek, the Corvax, they worship it as a god. I never thought it was real. I never thought. Are you all right? I can't imagine what you've gone through. Uh, it was, it was kind of scary. I tell Apollo of the things the Atlas said, how it spoke of travelers and sentinels as if they were protocols, not living things. The way it views us, the way it looked at me, I felt as life and I felt as if life and death were just fragile dreams, not real concepts at all. At least it didn't harm you. And I think, I think there's something in what you've just said. The Corvax pay homage to the Sentinels precisely because they believe them to be servants of this Atlas. We should investigate further. This machine will lead us to the Sentinel nest. We'll be rich before we know it. Apollo always looking for the money. Jeez. Okay. There are more important things than money, Apollo. I suggest we have bigger things to worry about. The Atlas felt hostile, inexplicable, inexplicable in its motives and purpose, not to mention all that has happened since. I tell Apollo of Artemis' grave and my encounter with the mysterious traveler Null. I suggest there is more going on here than the, an opportunity to earn units. Artemis is dead? I don't... How? Who would? I know I made fun of them, but that was easy. They cared. They believed. And Apollo is yeah, now. Now Apollo's feeling it. What happened to them? Where have you buried Artemis? I want to say goodbye if I can. I'm gonna tell him what happened. I tell Apollo that Null gave me a way to save Artemis to restore them to a form of life. Apollo is initially excited at the prospect of going to meet Artemis, but I explain that I could not do it. It would not have been life, just an empty existence within the simulation. I had to allow Artemis to find peace in death. Was it right? <laughs> yeah. I, oh. You did the right thing. You tried. Whatever you might be feeling right now, know that you're a good friend. I have to go through the portal and join you. That much is clear. We just need to figure out the right glyphs, the right address for that world of yours. Find a monolith, search for patterns in the data. These things are machines and we simply need to understand their code. Yeah, going through a portal, that seems great. What if he, it takes 20 years for him? He doesn't even think about that. Like, dude, I went through a portal and it was 20 years for Artemis. Can you imagine if it takes 20 years for Apollo to show up over here? Oh Lord. Well, let's go over here to this monolith. I need to go, I keep saying I'm gonna go to the space station. I haven't done it yet. I need to though, because I got so much crap in my inventory. It's insane. Oh, we got it though, guys. We got it. There should be a monolith here. We have to go answer the riddles. I mean, maybe. Generally, when you go to a monolith, you have to answer the riddle correctly. And when you do, it gives you the option to look for a uh, portal. But this might be different. Oh, man, of course. I can't see a monolith around here. Well, let's land. 
Where's this thing thing gonna be? Worst feature. I know I keep. I, I know I keep complaining. I'm sorry, guys. I just don't like the. Uh, I don't like the target sweeper at all, at all. Sean Murray, if you ever watch any of this, hopefully you take it away, <laughs> or give us a tool to like make it better. Like, give us an upgrade to just say, look, this will mark the. This will identify the object to wherever you're going immediately, rather than target sweeping. Flickering emblems appear on the stone. Although I do not recognize the language, somehow I can read the history of this strange planet and the Gek who once resided here. The foul scent of the Gek cannot be opposed. The first spawn commands it all it surveys. All it surveys. We are masters of the stars. Our rule shall endure eternally. I can't read you guys, sorry. The Viking and Corvex cower in despair at our name. There you go. I'm going to seek help with language. Uh, my knowledge of the Gek increases. Okay. This was not it? Oh, come on. I Yeah, I should have known that wasn't a freaking uh, monolith. But in my brain, I was like, oh, they said monolith, but they meant plaque, right? No, no. Literally need to find a monolith. Where are you at? Anyway. Over here? Is this the monolith? Good lord. Let's make sure, yeah, that it looks like a monolith. This is it. <laughs> that was just a test, you guys. I wanted to make sure you guys knew that was a plaque, you know. <laughs> I can't believe I went right over to the plaque. Didn't even think about it. All right. Oh, I know, I learned a whole bunch of words. We are up to 15 words. I need to learn a lot more than that. Anomaly. 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 I see the stone of the monolith. It's a movable muted silver. And yet something lurks beneath. It is gray and yet not gray. A crimson calling out from somewhere below its cool surface. Okay, the portal. Okay, yeah, we didn't have to do it this time. I'm just going to call in my ship. I'm too lazy to find it. Let's scan some stuff. Make some money. 60,000. I have a good multi-tool or what? Oh, yeah. I have all my uh, upgrades. Holy crap. Look at that. That's a solid scanning upgrade right there. Let's go this way. Two hours. Oh, okay. We have to go up to the outer atmosphere so we can pulse drive. That way we don't have to spend two hours trying to fly over here. It'll be more like eight seconds. I love that. It's just eight seconds. Boom. Now, if you're in a menu like this, it'll bounce you off the surface, which kind of sucks. But watch this. It'll bounce me off and I'll be looking up in the space. And I don't know why it does that. It's crazy. That's something I hope they fix. Because I get it, you know what, slow me down or stop me. Like, you know, put a pause or whatever, like instantly stop the ship. But don't like bounce me off. It's so irritating because if I'm in the menu doing something, I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> That's okay, right, though. We got this. Let's land over here. That, oh, it literally marked the portal for me, thankfully. I don't have to target sweep this thing. Now I need to get my code. But I need to charge the uh, portal first. And you should only have to charge it the first time. I mean, every once in a while, it'll randomly ask you to charge it, but it should be pretty much done every time. Yeah, dihydrogen. Cadmium. That's why I have that extra cadmium, you guys. We got that extra cadmium. I don't have to worry about it. So these are all the different elements you know, groups like deuterium, you know, cobalt, ionized cobalt, all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, you have your copper, cadmium, emerald, indium, and activated copper. But we have a whole bunch of extra cadmium. That's why we're using that. And condensed carbon. There we go. They all full? Oh, no, no. Didn't fill up that one. How'd that one not get full? I don't know why. Okay, that was kind of weird. Traveler capture loop enabled. Anomaly event contained. 
The portal seems to beg me as I approach, demanding my attention. It requires me to activate it. It requires me to travel on. I am unsure if I should listen. Let's let's request the planet's address. So there you go, old man! Everyone knows where I'm at now in my game. But secret is, I filmed this like a day or two ago, so I'm not even here anymore. All right, so we have the uh, glyphs that we can give to Apollo. So now we need to tell him where we're at. Where is my cool thing? Apollo Terminus. Mark it for me. Oh, a different planet. What the? There's a, there's a freaking Hollow Terminus right here on this planet. But nope. Give me another one on a different planet. On the uh, temperate moon. Okay. Okay. Let's see if it'll target sweep or if it'll just give me the location. Please just give me the location. Oh, no. It's going to target sweep me, but I can see it over here. There we go. See? I caught on to your tricks, No Man's Sky. Look at that. Just to make sure. Because <laughs> I know I'm supposed to come to a uh, hollow terminal, but uh, this might not be the same one I need to go to. Oh, we got an extreme storm coming through here. Let's talk to uh, Apollo now. Apollo Terminus activated. Multiple signal sources available. Here we go. Let's tune to Apollo. Apollo. Have you found the glyphs for your world? I'm almost ready. My suit is upgraded. My stomach is full. And I've hired a Gek to look after my farm while I'm away. What about your farm? What's going on here? Yes, I have a farm. What of it? It's not much, mostly fruit I found on my travels, but I'm hoping to expand. Anyway, it's no concern of yours. We have a portal to attend to, do we not? Yeah, okay, fine, Apollo. Keep your secrets. As I look at Apollo, I think of what I saw within the portal, of what happened with Artemis when they walked that same path. I think of the face of the Atlas, the way Nada warned me not to return to those tunnels. I do not know if the portals are safe. Here you go, buddy. If you want to do it, let's go. I give Apollo the glyphs, asking them to take care, to remember what happened to Artemis. They assure me that they will, promising to see me soon. Before I go, uh, they advise me to find out what I can from this so-called Null. They warned me to be careful, too. Yeah, let's talk to Null. Null, what's going on here? Two lost souls. One who cared too much, and one who cared too little. Their lives have not become what was promised, have they? Every sentient being that has ever lived has felt that way at some point. I know I did once upon a time. I was angry, confused at my own solitude. Imagine my surprise when you woke me. Oh, I do. I know you didn't mean to. I know you were just playing around with the portals. But whatever you did, I am here now. And I need your help. The Atlas. It is not what you think it is. Something is happening to the universe. Something I need your help to figure out. Uh, why do you need my help? You're like the super cool uh, traveler, right? The Sentinels do not just keep the peace across the universe. Their motives run deeper than that. Seeking out anomalies in the multiversal structure and eliminating them from existence. Have you looked at me? What do you think a Sentinel would do if they came across my form? No, it has to be you, traveler. There is an observatory nearby. It will lead you to the location of a crashed freighter of great interest to our investigation. There, there we will find the first secret. I am sure of it. Know that the Atlas is neither enemy nor friend to us, but more, no more than the air or the wind might be called such names. It is terrified. It is in pain and we have a responsibility to help its suffering no matter the cost. All right, so the Atlas is not a ruler or anything, I guess. Null doesn't like that. But we have to go find out something really important about Polo and Nada, and I love this part of it. I mean, you could go down like a huge, like a rabbit hole of information if you want to. That's fine, freaking traveler. Come on, quit switching my mission objectives. It's crazy. But yeah, you can go down the... Uh, 
the rabbit hole of how much lore is behind No Man's Sky. And I love it. I love it. I really... I wish they had more resources to make, like, cinematics and kind of do all that kind of stuff. It's, like, more traditional, like, you know, crazy story. All right. It's going to be a crash freighter nearby. I can't even see. I guess it's in this direction now. So let's go. Yeah, that storm is crazy. Oh, this way. Oh, no, no, not a crash freighter. It is a, uh, yeah, Null told me, and I've not even paid attention. Sorry, guys. An abandoned building or an observatory that's going to lead us to a crash freighter. Null's prediction was correct. The terminal is curiously open. The log's ready for me to read. Almost like someone prepared it. This observatory appears to have functioned as a salvage station. Manned by a Gek specialist. Hmm. A translator. They were accused of questioning things that should not be questioned. Of sowing the seeds of dissent. This posting was meant to be as a, a punishment. But it appears that this posting was the making of them. They found strange things in the wrecks. Aberrations. Data that spoke of worlds that did not exist. And events that did not happen. That Gek went out to investigate one such craft. The life signature of a Corvax still on board. But they never returned. This is how Nada and Polo met? Yes! Is this how my friends found each other? There is a signal on the console, a warning on repeat. 16 short bursts of data in a loop. Let's get it. I extract the coordinates for the distress signal. A crashed vessel awaits me on another world. Now we're gonna go find that crashed freighter. And this is, yeah, Polo was being too curious that all the other Gek wanted to punish him by forcing him to work at this, like, crazy outpost way out in the middle of nowhere. But Polo found something important out here. Extreme Storm! Get back to our ship. That way we can fly over to it. It looks like it's on a different planet as well. Can you imagine you get a posting on like a, a, a derelict planet out in the middle of nowhere and then you find like the most insane thing out in the universe that no one else has ever seen? Oh, of course, it's on this planet right next to me. But yeah, you literally find like, you know, a multi-dimensional thing where there are different worlds, different galaxies out there and no one believes you. All right, crash site. Where are you at? Up oh, right there. It's almost like they want me to tear, you know, to do my target sweeper, but I'm going to do, I'm not going to do that at all. I'm just going to land here. Now, you're going to have to unlock it. So what they want you to do is they want you to go to all the uh, shipping containers. You're going to need three keys, I think. But they're going to be locked behind these doors. You don't need to shoot it. You can just use your laser. I, you know, wasn't paying attention. These cargo pods will have the keys and you just have to, you have to trash this stuff, which is cool. It used to be you had to have a special material to unlock it. Now, instead of having a material to unlock it, you just have to remove the junk and unlock it that way. It's so cool. I like that. We got a log encryption key. So there's going to be, there's always two above the ground. You have one there. There's always going to be one over here. And then you're going to have the containers, the cargo pods underground that you're going to have to dig up with your ter terrain manipulator. There we go. And I think we need one more. And there's a whole bunch. If you pull out your visor, you can see there's a, a container over there. There should be in a few containers, but there's one right here, which is easy to get to because we're right here anyway. So let's do this. And now you're going to have to bust open this door. So let's do that. And then continue digging out all the dirt. There we go. And this should be the last one we need. I only think we need three. Maybe we need more, but I think it's only three. And normally those containers will give you random materials. In this point, it's a story mission, so... It's going to give you the log, you know, stuff. But 
normally they would give you materials like, you know, antimatter or some cool, like, awesome stuff. Crew manifest missing. Limited data available. Let's read log. One encryption key, as you can see. I do not know who will read this message. I do not know if anything will survive, but I must die as I live. I will record it all, even in the face of oblivion. The swarm came to every world. The drones acted erratically, not attacking, just watching. Time passed and the Sentinels did not seem to be much of a threat anymore. They were peaceful now, we thought. We had been forgiven. We were wrong. Let's continue. Ship logs requested accessing. They, stu they struck as one. An attack somehow coordinated across the unfathomable distance. With a fury exceeding all prior skirmishes, the Sentinels annihilated all biological life within the universe in a span of 54.2 standard minutes. Less than an hour, they killed all life in the universe. That's crazy. Only I remained. The Corvax stood with me in the end, to their credit. They concealed me within their flotilla as they headed towards the center. Oh no, we need another one? Okay, so, for whatever reason, Polo survived the attack from all the Sentinels that, you know, destroyed everything. And so the, uh, the Corvax were hiding him, trying to protect him. And, uh, the Atlas did not appreciate that. Or the Sentinels, I should say. Acting for the Atlas. Let's open this thing up. Now you have to clear out the dirt. That way we can get to the container. All right, we got another log. I think that's it. So maybe four. <laughs> we'll see. I might have to go out and find another one. Oh, come on. There it is. Let's do it. They are coming now. The screams of my friends resonate in every hall, every corner. The Sentinels have found me. I told Nada to leave. I told them what we already know, all of us. We are not alone. Even if I die, Nada will find me again in another universe. Ten just like me. A thousand. A million. We are not alone, for every soul is many. Even in the face of sixteen, we must declare that we lived. We existed, no matter the horror of the end. They are at my door. And then it ends. Error. Unexpected log termination. So they found Nada and Polo in another uh, universe, in another dimension. And the Sentinels finally got them. But not in this one. In this one they lived. Let's go uh, to the hollow terminus. Is it on the other planet? Oh, come on. <laughs> there has to be a hollow terminus on that one. I mean, why go back and forth between the moon and the planet? It's crazy. And I'm not going to the same one every time. It's finding a random one just on this uh, planet or this moon, technically. Ah, uh, let's land over here. This is my hollow terminus. Of course, don't land on the landing area. Land randomly over here. Yep, this is it. Of course, let me recharge my stuff here. It's a rainy planet. I'm liking it. Hollow Terminus activated, multiple signal sources available. The tower hosts a powerful transmitter designed to facilitate holographic communication. Let's talk to Null. What did you find out there? Tell me everything. All right. I tell Null of the freighter and its recordings. How it spoke of a world where the Sentinels eliminated all life, leaving only a traveler and a single Corvax entity. 
I chose my words with care. You think I do not know who the Corvax entity is? Do not be so naive, Traveler. Do you think anyone... Do you think anything you have read is a surprise to me? Well, why'd you pretend like it was a surprise earlier then, No. But I had to be sure of what I suspected. I know it now. The Atlas is with you. You could not see those things if it did not wish it. So that freighter was a wreck from a parallel universe. There are countless such places with our multiverse dimensions where things happen differently. But there are three exceptions to this. The Atlas is omnipresent in all, a singular being with a singular perception. The Sentinels move between dimensions at will. Great. Ask about the Sentinels. They served the Atlas once. They were guardians of reality, defenders of civilization. They hunted for errors within the universes, preventing destruction and loss of life. The Annihilation record recorded that in that log. Well, something must have been quite wrong for them to do a thing like that. Yeah. They, when they had to go hunt down every living thing. The Atlas created all life and the Sentinels defended it, searching for anomalies within that creation. That they annihilated an entire universe. Well, something must have been quite wrong for them to do a thing like that. After a time, the Sentinels ended their service to the Atlas. Um, how do you know all this? I have been alive for a very long time, Traveler. I know as much as you would know had you seen the things that I have seen. It was the Travelers who corrupted existence. Our arrival was meant to herald, <laughs> herald a glorious age. But we made a terrible mistake. I committed an act beyond forgiveness. And from this deed, paradise was lost. But something is different in this cycle. The walls between universes. They grow thin. Not a noses, but they keep their head in the sand. We must learn what we can from each species before we decide what to do. Visit a Viking cartographer and speak with them. I will translate. Okay. So basically, Noel is from a different universe, and so is Nada. But Nada wants to pretend like nothing bad's happening. He just doesn't want to. He doesn't want to get all wrapped up in it. Noel is trying to figure out what to do. Heck yeah, guys! Well, hopefully you guys liked the episode. If you did, hit that like button, and I will see you in the next episode when we learn about all the three different races in No Man's Sky. So I will see you guys then.